here we go. Uh, just a couple of sec. I think we are already live. Okay. I think so. Okay, here we go. Here we go again. Uh, let me start in, in, in Italian and then we switch to, to English. Uh, ragazzi, siamo ancora live, è stata veramente una giornata lunghissima, siamo di nuovo qui, questa volta con un panel con un ospite internazionale, abbiamo con noi Damien Sheridan, che ovviamente, come dice, suggerisce il nome, è un, un ospite internazionale. Quindi adesso faremo un switch totalmente in inglese, le domande vi prego di farle in inglese così le può leggere anche lui e vi risponderà, eh, vi risponderà ovviamente. E eh, ora passiamo a, passiamo a lingua inglese. Allora, Damien, good afternoon. Hello, uh, buongiorno a, a tutti. Buongiorno a tutti, ok. I, I'm sorry, that, I'm sorry everyone, that's it from my Italian. Uh, I, I have to come no, back. You know, we, we're taking advantage of this format to, to, you know, to go outside the Italian boundaries. I, I mean, we are in the same country because you are, you are living in Spain as me. So we are, we are all, to, all of us transmitting from Spain. So it's quite strange transmitting from Spain in English for the Italian, for, for, for Italy. So it's, it's quite crazy. Today we talk about, we want to talk about something that is really mainstream or something is going mainstream these days. And we're talking about direct bookings that for the Italian markets, I would translate it as like, you know, disintermediation, disintermediation. And as we, we talk about before with, with Luca De Giglio is more it's, it's something that is going you know going on is coming you know becoming more and more uh, interesting and more and more people is is interested in this practice so i i have the pleasure to have with, to have with us this afternoon uh, one of the person i think in europe knows better about uh, their bookings and damien is one of the a seal master no you can see yourself <laughs> So you, you're a kind of master of, of CEO, so uh, yes, yes, online yes. positioning, and uh, you are the host of Book Direct Show, which is an uh, uh, online event that I'm, I'm participating during the organization of this live mm -hmm. online event like this one, and it's going to be held in September, 29th and 30th. 29th okay, and 30th. So, okay, nice. So we are we're inviting all, all of you that want to participate and want to join us to this uh, you know, event, online event dedicated to the um, direct bookings. This is the opportunity. So the, the, the website is bookdirect.show. Bookdirect.show, exactly. Okay, yeah. so if you're interested in knowing more about this event- It's all the, in English, I'm afraid. No, yeah, so uh, maybe we, maybe we can work problem. on that with you, Tom Paul. It shouldn't be that shouldn't be a problem because nowadays if people want to you know succeed if you want to grow their knowledge they need to go, to go outside the italian boundaries because all the knowledge all the technology for vacation renta comes from abroad so it's normal it's quite normal to, to you know to to have to switch between italian and english so i mean for, for me for me it's quite normal because i i'm, I'm trying to you know bring in more and more knowledge culture from 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 you guys working in the international market the us uk and other european countries to italy is quite complex i'm seeing because we tried at host b2b to bring people from abroad and the results was quite poor since you know very few people they can at least understand english this is the problem mm -hmm. so we mm -hmm. we are doing our best to to improve it Let's let's start from here. Okay, so could you introduce briefly yourself? What you do? What you're doing? Uh, your, you know, what? Why you're talking about direct bookings? So just sure. for as 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 a, a starting point. Of course, yeah. I'll try, I'll try to speak slowly uh, for those who uh, don't have English as their their first language. Um, so I'm Damien. Uh, I've known Gianpaolo for, well, online for several years, but we only met for the first time, I think, last year in, in Malaga at Vitor. Yeah. Um, so I, as Gianpaolo says, I am an SEO, search engine optimization consultant, and I work with property managers in the short term rental industry and uh, service accommodation, uh, predominantly in the UK and Europe, but I have a few clients in the US as well. And I have moved in towards events um, over the last year, predominantly because through my work um, with property managers on SEO, 
I could see there was a real gap for education in direct bookings. Um, and a major part of my work with clients is that they bring in more interest and more, more visits online and more organic ranking online, uh, away from the major OTAs especially. And um, the, it just struck me that there were many other ways to bring in direct bookings as well as SEO. Um, and that includes you know, social media, email marketing, uh, consumer trust, uh, I mean, dozens upon dozens. So one thing led to another, and we had an event in London uh, last uh, in February, yep. the More Bookings Direct Conference, and uh, it was it was a great success. We had um, we had about eighty property managers, some with companies of up to several thousand uh, properties, and uh, we, yeah, it was it was really good. We had speakers come from all over the world, and uh, not just Europe. We had uh, Deborah Labby come from Australia, although she does base herself in Europe a lot and uh, from Denmark, from Spain, Switzerland, and uh, we equally had delegates come from all over Europe just to learn various strategies about pushing, about how to generate more direct bookings. Because in this day and age, it's becoming more and more important as we become, we, we do honestly become more squeezed out by, by the OTAs that are really dominating our, our market space. So, uh, so yeah, so my passion has really moved on to the whole direct booking movement as well as SEO. And really bring bring a level of control back to our businesses. So, and you're talking about movement, meaning that there is a group of people working behind scenes to to spread the word of direct booking. Exactly, uh, John Paul. Yeah, and, and my aim with this event is to create that community, community of presenters and those who are genuinely passionate about the direct booking movement. It's not an anti OTA movement. No, far from it. you know we all we understand. The importance that OTAs play in our, in our industry, you know, without Airbnb, Booking, Expedia, VRBO, Homeway, uh, we we a lot of us would be lost, and we've got a lot to be thankful for for those uh, for those major platforms. Um, some of us may not have been thankful over the last couple of weeks, <laughs> but um, it's the you know they do play a very important part and role in our in our market, and uh, so yeah, it's not anti OTA; it's about just diversification of our of our own businesses. And uh, really kind of retaining a level of control back whereby we have ownership of our guest data, of our, of our bookings, and uh, can kind of play our strategies the way we want to, and we're not under a, a regime um, as such. They, you know, they do play a very important part and role in our... Okay, no. Sorry, I was, you know, preparing the, 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 the live show. No so, nice. Um... We're going to talk about a direct booking. Direct bookings, I think we, we already have the, the pleasure to talk about this uh, a couple of months ago already in the past. With, we had a panel together with, other, with a revenue manager and one PMS company talking about the best strategy to have, a, you know, to improve your direct booking strategy. So there are a lot of, you know, points in for a, a very good direct booking uh, you know best practice strategy so what do you think is what how do you define direct booking what do you what do what does it mean for you direct booking it's, it's, it's a tricky one in all honesty John Paolo because what for one person is a direct booking is very different to another and um, for me it's yeah. about it's about um, it's about control over over the booking. You know where where you've got that booking from. Some people might say if it's come through uh, a third party platform, it's it's uh, it's not a direct booking. Um, however, you know I disagree with that because you can still get bookings, you know, from social media or from some listing sites that come through, and you've got total ownership of that guest data. So uh, for me, it's it's more about what you do, what you do, what what you, the availability, what you can do with that booking so for example you're not tied into a certain cancellation policy or you're not you're not uh, you have full guest data you know be it their email address their telephone number full name etc whatever you've asked for just having total ownership of that data and ap applying your rules to your booking um so yeah that that would be it and you know there are there are there are listing sites and there are major otas out there who do 
for subscription fees, annual subscription fees, they, they can send you direct bookings. You know, a lot of people forget that and, and because they're kind of, they're squeezing that model out, but it still can happen. Um, so I count that as a direct booking. Um, so yeah, but it's, as I said, it's, it's kind of ambiguous, but for me, it's about that level of control um, thereafter when you've, when you've received the booking. I don't know if you have, you know, investigated the Italian market and what does it I, mean? Direct I'm booking not for the Italian, market. Italian market. No, and that's what I'm here to learn from, from you, Gian Paolo and, and the guys. Okay. So I think in general, Italian market is dominated by OTAs like many others in Europe right. or, or worldwide. So the, the problem here is that this crisis nearly stopped the entire industry. So we, we are at the level of, you know, nothing has happened or, or, or I would say in 90% of the bookings in the next couple of months have been directly completely cancelled. Yeah. So many companies from the industry are now struggling, just you know, looking forward to say, hey, what's next? What are, what are, what are we going to do? Okay. And I think one of the strategies to you know move forward and look for the future, this is maybe the, the 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 things that make more sense is like trying to reduce the your dependence from from OTAs at the same time trying to find other ways to get those bookings yeah. of course it's something that since these days we have more time that they can to you know to study or to create you know or to, to improve our knowledge of the market maybe start uh, thinking about having a, a, a real good direct booking strategy in place is a must so is why I am inviting you and I think you as a master on, on, on this we want to you know go through a couple of points that you prepared no you have like a, a short list of I've, things I've got a, yeah a little list of things that people can be working on um what I did actually do I, I wasn't going to you know do a big plug of the book direct show but um on the on that website the book direct show I have compiled a guide of things that people can be doing during this downtime that can certainly help towards their their future book uh, direct booking strategy. So it's it's definitely worth checking there. Um, but yeah, I mean, there are dozens upon dozens of things that people can be doing, you know. And a lot, most of these, I'm not an expert in. I have to to stress that, and that's why I have begun working on these these events because I want to bring people in that I learn from as well. And uh, you know, that was a really great thing in London that we had. A lot of our speakers said, "Hey, I didn't know that from some." Some of the other presenters they learned so much yeah, yeah. i'm you know i'm not an expert at all in social media for example but i learned so much about social media and how to engage people you know in terms of um gaining that interest and you know potentially having them come to your site from there uh, but there are dozens upon dozens you know and uh I'm, i'm happy just to go through a few examples today of things that people can be working on in during this downtime um just to uh, just to help you know to potentially help Uh, because, yeah, I mean, I'm the same. I have uh, an apartment just up the road here. Uh, I've no bookings now for the next two months. We had about uh, eight cancel, or we fortunately managed to change the dates for most. But we, yeah, I, I totally empathize. We're all going through a really, really tough time. I hope we can all come out of it, um, you know, success, well, not successfully, but we, you know, we survive. So, and um, what do you think about, you know, these days, you know, OTAs? somehow they 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 uh, you know the, the the problem is that otas are should be something in in between you know customer guests and hosts and it's something that in these days uh, otas decided to to you know to look for their customers basically guests instead of you know looking for help you know day providers yeah. they, oh, guests they're hosts. they're partners They're, exactly. they're partners. They don't have any inventory. It we are their their crucial partners, and I I, I do think that Air, um, Airbnb especially uh, forgot about that. And uh, you know, I think for a while they had tended to lean towards guests in in certain circumstances, um, like you know for damage or you know little things like that. But now they they dropped the ball majorly over the last two weeks. You know, just to uh, do a sweeping full refund cancellation. Yeah, they, they're trying to you know somehow you know resolve the situation like offering a kind of reimbursement or something. Yeah, I don't think is the the right move right right now. Maybe it's they are trying to you know. For me, it's it's 
it's just perhaps a little bit it's a bit too late, too late. You know? yes, uh, yeah. I, I think emotionally people have uh, a lot of prof like professional hosts and managers have 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 just lost it with airbnb you know they um they uh, i think they just lost sight of the fact that we were their their crucial partners and um yeah they this um this gesture as i as i really think it is over the last the last few days is is only that you know i think people are going to now look look elsewhere be a bit more proactive about where they can source their bookings and um yeah direct bookings and one, one thing we, we are hearing more and more these days is about you know the direct booking fever a lot of people is saying hey we want we are looking to alternatives to you know the, the normal direct the, the normal bookings we are seeing from OTAs and mm -hmm. I heard like in the, in the the panel in the in the previous panels we 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 were talking about creating new uh, platforms, new the you know yeah. uh, you know like kind of decentralized uh, platforms where yeah something like yeah. this you know creating you know platform or consolidate you know property managers into you know local management <laughs> communities something like this that somehow it is the 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 the, the juice of the direct booking movement because you know. We are trying to find ways to disentrate the the um, uh, uh, bring away bookings from OTAs. You know, um, yeah. intermediate basically. Yeah. So, okay. could we go forward and, and and start moving with some of your? Do you want to share something? Do we have slides? Yeah. Uh, I don't have any slides as such, uh, John Paolo. No, I can, but I'm happy to. If we can do something, you know, um, in the future, get get some uh, information on on your the host uh, um, Facebook page or something like that. Okay. Uh, happy to to do a checklist for people because I think it's important and that there's, you know, as we we're going to have loads of webinars uh, for for the event in September, so probably no better way to uh, you know to to give yourself that knowledge than to uh, to jump on board. But um, yeah, I mean, there was, I learned so much, as I said, from our London event, and I'm, I'm kind of going to draw upon a lot of those things, uh, or a few of those things today, just because um, I think they're just, they're just really important and things that I myself and other hosts and managers have lost sight of. Um, and I think that the first thing that I kind of wanted to talk about today um, was expertise, just um, in terms of your, every, every one of us, has a certain level of expertise. Um, and if we don't, we should be experts in our local area. We should know everything about our local area for, for our guests and uh, for our clients. And you know that includes anything from uh, things to do in your area, local restaurants, walks, you know, how to get from such and such to you know, another place, travel, uh, um, you know, anything that a potential guest uh, that, or perhaps a previous guest has asked you in the past, and that they continue to ask the same questions to us, you know, upon check-in. We need to we need to be methodical about these, and we need to add them to our websites as well, because this is an important part of content creation for our websites and our blogging too, um, in order to to rank organically on search engines like Google. Uh, but I think a guest now, they're they expect more from us, you know, as property managers, and they they if if they spot any weakness in us and uh, in terms of not knowing an answer to their questions you know they will go elsewhere we need to be, we need to have that le um, that level of, of complete expertise in our area not just our property and how many beds we've got and uh, you know uh, the amenities that we provide what what is available to people you know immediately upon leaving your front door uh, to make their holiday or their stay as as um, as, as as good as possible so um, I think that's a really important starting point. Do you know everything about your area? Do you, are you an expert? What are you going to do with that? You know, can you, will you be telling your future guests about this? Can you start producing content on your website? Uh, good, you know, um, quality content to start ranking on, on search engines, et cetera. So I think it's a, it's a really good and simple starting point that a lot of us lose sight of. Um... And did you see a lot of requests coming in from, you know, from property managers or from us these days due to the crisis? Oh yeah. Oh my goodness. Um, the last two weeks, 
uh, I, I think our, <laughs> I think this movement has has exploded. Uh, you know, I, I think, as I said, the way uh, you know, I don't want to name names, but you know, Airbnb, have, have, I think, have handled this appallingly. And uh, you know, I'm a big fan of Airbnb and, and what they do and what they provide. But I think people now know that they 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 can't just live their business on upon piggybacking off another business you know, and um, being basically told how to run things. And even still, you know, when they have a cancellation policy that is then overridden, uh, it's, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's not on, <laughs> you know, and I think a lot of people have just lost, lost total trust. Um, and, you know, trust is, is a very important part of this industry, you know, and, and that kind of leads me on to another point, actually, I was going to talk about is, is trust and, uh, and consumer trust. And that um oh are we still on jump on uh, yes 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 yeah sorry i thought i thought um we lost something there um i think trust your your consumer your end consumer being your your website visitor for example needs to implicitly trust you needs to know when they find your website for example that uh you are you not only have that level of expertise and that you know and that they know they're going to be safe with you uh but certain things with your website that, that you know you're you've got a security certificate for example the https you know little things that some some property managers have still kind of lost sight of over the last little while um what else um ju just levels of uh, uh, memberships and accreditations they go a long way you know if you were a member of a, a regional or national membership or a group of of providers and uh, make sure that's that's uh, showing and displayed on your website so people can can totally trust you um i, I work with a company called iprac and they yeah. i don't you aware of them john paulo so yeah, chris yeah, yeah. very very active on on linkedin uh, they sponsored our event in February, and they do. They have a great service that they verify hosts um, for for um, guests. Um, so when a, when someone jumps onto a website, they'll see this property is being IPRAC verified. So they know this is, a, this is a good point since in Italy there's a lot of scams during, especially during it's, the summer. There's a, a lot of property managers that they they notice that you know people are are, are receiving out of scams. You know, booking. You know. Uh, villas apartments and you know and, and and they when they go there they find oh, there's no apartment or there's there uh, there's no booking for me so this is something that a service like iprac could solve somehow especially in this italian market that needs this kind of services so trust as you yeah. said is the is one of the keywords I, I think it's i think it's really important as well Basically, as as i, as I said those... in payments as well no um, payments exactly yeah yeah how, how, how are you taking payments online you know and uh, ex accepting various levels uh, various types of payments like credit cards as well some some um, payment um, providers do, um, or PMSs don't accept a credit card which is crazy because you know people want that protection when they uh, when they pay for their for their um, for their holiday or for their stay um, so yeah, consumer trust, I think is a, is a really important uh, part of this. Make sure, you know, take the time, get your friends, get your family to look over your website. It, does it look trustworthy? Is it, you know, is it something that people will book on? Um, and um, yeah, and, and get, get several people to have a look at it. Um, just those, those simple things can make such a difference just to, to stop the, the block, you know, where people may not book on your site. Uh, and trust is a, is a really important part of that. And you you were mentioning Google My Business is part of, of, is yeah. part of the game, no? Because it is know. actually, sorry, I'll just, I'll say one other thing, just actually about websites and bookings as well. Um, conversions on, on websites as well. It's, re it's really tough um, because, booking conversions, I mean, um, because as an SEO, my job is predominantly to bring uh, website tra uh, traffic to a website of my clients um, a lot of the time at that point um, I, I may not have 100% a, a control over what a guest does from there whether they actually will go and book and one of the most frustrating things is to see uh, a visitor who's gone through several levels of the booking process you know one or two pages 
and they and they go off and book and you see they go, have booked on booking.com or, or Airbnb and it's it's so frustrating uh, so so little things that you can do again I would instruct people just to get friends and family to look at the booking process of their website is it easy you know are you asking too many things too many fields you know you, you don't need people's addresses before before they book. You don't need them to register on your site before they book. You know, you just need to keep it as simple as possible. Get their basic data before they book. Don't be looking to upsell at that early point uh, with extra pages worth of, um, of, of options to buy. Keep it really simple and just um, keep that booking funnel as, as short as possible with as, as minimal amount of clicks possible too. Um, so yeah, just test that out during this downtime as well. But yeah, Google My Business is, is a really important part of, of your local SEO and how you're going to show up for search, search queries in a given area. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, and I think so many uh, property management companies ha haven't even claimed their, their Google My Business listing, let alone actually gone ahead and tried to optimize it. And I, um, I think it's a really important and, and quite an easy step actually to take for, uh, for any of us. Uh, just to make sure you you claim your listing, uh, verify your address, usually by a postcard um, through the post, and just fill out as much of the information as possible. Um, include, I'm sure you've done this several times over, Gianpaolo, but uh, you know, yeah, and and it's you need to go back at least once a month just to make sure there aren't changes uh, and new things available to you because they do change all the time. Uh, but I would say things like um, ma making sure all your information is updated, your description, your images, add lots and lots of images in there, uh, high res images that are all geotagged, um, your, what else, your, your, all your amenities, make sure your categories are, are all correctly listed, um, reviews, make sure you respond to reviews. Uh, there, there is a really great way actually of, of um, sending out review requests. We had a webinar about this yesterday. Oh, really? Oh, um, sorry, I should have been watching. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so uh, uh, did you touch on the short name, Google short name? No, I don't know what that, what is no? that? Okay, so there's a new thing called, the sh well, it's not new, it's a few months back, uh, several months ago, but uh, you can a get short your name. Own. Short name is short like shortener, short URL shortener. Yeah, exactly. Uh, is yeah. Google, so you can Google send it out. Yeah, yeah I'll, I'll include it in a, in a link if you want, uh, how, how to get it, yeah. Uh, but it's really great, and you can send that on to your guests uh, to, to very quickly write a, uh, a review of, of their stay. And, uh, and they're adding more quality reviews in more reviews, full stop, to uh, to your Google My Business profile really does help in terms of ranking on the that local map. You know the uh, the map pack where uh, that often which is very, is very important because nowadays a lot of people is, is are performing searches directly from the mobile, and I am one of those you know fuckers looking to you know looking for new businesses in the in in, in directly on the Google Maps. So yeah. if uh, you are yeah. listed on Google Maps, absolutely is, is one of the, the features and. I think I prefer to have uh, to to have the option to to check reviews on Google Maps instead of going to many sites like a, a TripAdvisor that I don't trust anymore. Yeah, there's well, there's always been a level of distrust with with. Uh, yeah, exactly. Google. You know, even on Google Maps, I, I'm seeing a lot of you know people just you know posting something there just to have like the, the medal that I am super or local or local pro or something yeah. like this. That is a, that a lot, there's a lot of bullshit, but you, you can see the difference between a real review and a false review. Yeah. So yeah. Exactly. Even, there, exactly. even there, it depends on, on the on your sense of judgment. You can see, hey, this is real, this is not real. So, you know. um, and it's it's important to re respond to those reviews as well. Uh, yeah. it, that is a, that is a contributing factor to your, your local SEO as well. But what I, I would also make sure people are aware of um, is that, you know, the little knowledge panel that appears on the right hand side, when, yeah. especially when you tap in a brand name. Um, and this is another reason to work on your branding. But if you've got a specific name for your business or property, um, doing um, uh, maintaining your Google My Business profile will ensure that you uh, have an, an, an updated or maybe a new knowledge panel appearing on the right hand side of a, of a search. And it's really important. It makes you look a lot more credible and your reviews will show up there as well. So 
by someone typing in your uh, your brand name, that will be you know in instantly uh, visible for them. And um, yeah, just just doing these things well can make a big difference to people. You know, especially searching for your brand, but you know, finding you on maps too. I get nearly all of my bookings um, for my place in Spain here through through Google Maps and the local map. I have a, a couple of tricky questions, maybe more than a couple. And yeah, sure. So the thing is, many times people think about, you know, direct bookings like a, an alternative or as an option, just so you know, is an alternative to, you know, no, normal booking, direct booking from not direct booking, intermediation, intermediated booking from OTAs. Mm -hmm. But uh, direct bookings uh, have a cost, right? Yep. How do you calculate the cost of direct bookings? That, that, that is a tricky one, John Paul. Um, I well, obviously, you've got to weigh up all of your marketing channels. You know what you what you're actually spending on each. You know because you can bring in direct bookings from you know uh, Facebook campaigns or Google campaigns, um, and but you need to be. Uh, very, are you putting your time into the into the the in the number? I I would include well someone's time if you're paying them. To uh, yeah, for for you know their marketing services. Uh, however, I generally wouldn't if it was just myself. Uh, no, because then I can get a bit ambiguous and uh, for me anyway. But that's not to say that that's right or wrong. Uh, but I I probably wouldn't. I don't know about you. Would you? I, I would put my time. I, I mean, is time that I'm not dedicated to other tasks of my you know yeah. daily you know the daily business. It's like I'm taking, I'm dedicating three, four, eight hours, I don't know, whatever, in the week or in a day or in a year, in a month. Mm -hmm. And this has a hourly costs that need to yeah. be calculated. Yeah. And yeah, as I said, I, I think, think this is an error, but many, many people don't calculate this because you are, you know, taking out attention to a specific argument that maybe, you know, revenue management or, you know, creating content or something like this that you're dedicating to marketing or, you know, as you said, social, I mean, things like this. And mm. taking into account these numbers is really important. I, I mean, think time, actually, it, it time is probably one of the most important things for the direct booking movement yeah. as well, because uh, we're all, well, we're usually very, very busy people you know, um, with our marketing and with our, you know, with our guests, with our PMSs, etc. So a lot of people, and this is an issue I've always had with SEO, um, a lot of people don't have the time to look at SEO. They don't have time to work out their, you know, their ROIs or their COAs or, or whatever. So this, this, that's a really important thing, time. What, what, what kind of time can you, uh, you know, can you prom uh, push to, to something? And, uh, you know, it's, that, that's a real issue for people, you know, dedicating time to their, their direct booking strategy as well. Um, so Based yeah. on that, we are saying we are saying that direct booking is not for everyone. It's no, it's it's not. No, absolutely not. And I and I, it, you know what? It's probably not for even the most most people. You know, because people are busy and people. You know, a lot of people have second jobs as well. This isn't necessarily their their first. Uh, you know, their 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 uh, their livelihood. So yeah, no, it's 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 absolutely not. It's really for, for me, it's for those professionals who want to get ahead um, and okay. who, especially now, do not, do not want to have to rely on those third parties uh, for their bookings and th who want to re retain that level of control over their own business. It's, control is really important part of this and diversification and uh, knowing that you own and control your own business. I mean, there's not many other business uh, industries that, were, you know, would, uh, that have this model whereby you can, you know, effectively live off other businesses and bring on all of your revenue from other businesses which is what we really are doing so we are saying that you know uh, direct bookings can, can is a second job so only people that can you know control different i mean there are several tasks that need to be done every day continuously to receive direct booking because if you fall one day doing you know social media creating contents yeah. the, testing things and you you will immediately stop receiving direct bookings. 
you might not just stop receiving direct bookings, but the, the, for example, the longer you might go on without posting something on your social media page, uh, mm -hmm. pages, uh, it, it might start to look like, you know, you, you're not tending to your business very well. Um, and that's why yeah. I'd, I'd always tell someone not to, you know, to use too many social media platforms if it's only one or two people involved, because whilst you might have great intentions to start off with, you know, yeah, I'm going to post every day, several times a day, that can so quickly change. And before you know it, you're posting there maybe once every few days, once a week, once a month. And then you're almost better off people not finding your page because people don't want to see that. They want to see you engaged all the time. So your time resources are, are really important. Uh, I think especially on social media. So before we were saying about the, the, the website is a really important part of the direct booking uh, Absolutely strategy. Key. Yeah. Do you think that's worth to have a, a website, a performing website that have, you know, direct booking, direct booking capabilities or is something that, you know, I'm seeing that everyday people is, they are looking to, I'm, I'm, I'm creating my website or I'm, I'm going to create my website. Do you think is something essential or something that is, you know, uh, is part of the, the, the entire structure of a direct booking strategy? Yeah. Or I think like yeah, I think it's absolutely essential. Yeah. Um, and I think it's, it, that's nothing new. I think it's been absolutely essential for, for years. Uh, it's to what level you want to, to, to stand out with your website that can make the difference. Uh, I mean, there are, there are some great website builders, you know, even specific to our industry, like Promote My Place and Logify, uh, that do good jobs in terms of their drag and drop uh, platforms. And you can have a really good website up and running in you know, a couple of hours. Uh, but if you really want to you know, perhaps work on your SEO or you have a blank canvas really of a, a website where you can do pretty much anything you know, you and I would probably use WordPress, uh, Gian Paolo, yeah. and I know a lot of other people would too. There are, you know, there's lots of other CMSs out there, but that would be my choice to, to take this time just to learn WordPress potentially, or, you know, get somebody to work on it with you to help you design it, but to learn it yourself as well, because um, yeah, it's totally essential. I mean, and I'm not just thinking of an SEO standpoint here, it's creating that, that kind of consumer trust and, getting people to book with you essentially. And, um, you know, giving yourself that extra level of credibility. If someone finds you on uh, say booking.com uh, and you have a brand name, you know, a lot of people will search for that, you know, um, away from that third party booking platform. And if they can't find you, well, okay. You know, they might still book with you, but you're at least you're giving yourself a chance to get a direct booking elsewhere um, through your own site if, if you're available to be found. And, uh, and I think that's that's really important. And also, just in terms of even if someone's going to book on that third party platform, you know, at least they see, oh, OK, they are they are legit or they come across as legitimate, you know, <laughs> hey, they, you know, everyone can build a website, but, you know, it, it might lend your your offer a little bit of extra credibility to, to wherever they do go and book, hopefully on your site. Because in one of our previous webinars, we were talking about, you know, uh, doing some kind of branding in, in, in even on the OTAs, you know, the, in title, in the, in, you know, yeah. in, in listing titles, you know, <coughs> something in terms of, you know, part of the strategy that we were sharing this time in, in this pretty specific webinar was about the billboard effect. So, you know, you, know, you are using in, like booking.com or Airbnb, something like this too, in order to, you know, promote your, in, very, what can I say? Is very. I don't know. I don't know the word. Sorry, sorry today. I've been speaking in Italian. Every, all the That's all right. Don't worry. Don't worry. It's but yeah, but people can. Yeah, if you've got a, yeah. a brand name kind of in amongst your 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 title on very some subtle, day, but I, I the word. Very, it's very subtle. The the time. The, the you know people can find in in the title name say like um, I don't know. Um, I don't know. And, yeah. uh, I don't have an example, but you know, in the title, if you read, you know, there's something that sounds like a, a brand, a brand name or a, 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 an accommodation name, then you can search it on, on Google.com. Yeah, yeah like a, website. A, a company name. Yeah, exactly. exactly. And you, you do have 
control nearly on, on all OTAs with a bio as well to add in those those details in there too. So uh, another reason to to uh, to really get that brand name in there and work on your branding. Um, we we had someone do an amazing presentation on branding in our at our London event. She's she's going to speak again at the Book Direct show and you know branding. I'm not an expert and that's why I brought her on board and I'm not going to say too much today about branding. But it's so important just to set yourself apart. You know, find that USP, that unique selling point, and uh, and and get it out there and push it and push it and push it, because your brand is uh, is you, and it's how people are going to know you. They're not going to know you as you know Jan Paolo's rentals. They're going to know <laughs> Vacation Rental Rocket or or whatever. So yeah, I'm thinking <laughs> of doing branding every moment. You know, as you say, I have my shirt on and I'm trying to do my 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 promoting my brand. Yeah. So. Uh, I, 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 I have some more questions and let me find it. And do you want me just to kind of talk about a few other areas that I think are maybe important? Uh, if you have points you want to go through, yes, please. No, whatever. I'll, I'll, I'll answer your question, John Paolo, which, whichever you uh, prefer. Uh, let me search it because I have a lot of questions here. And... <laughs> mm -hmm. Uh, okay, this is really important, and I want your opinion on that. We were, back in the past, we were discussing about, you know, uh, the direct bookings can be different depending on the, the lo not location, the, the where you are standing. So uh, in, in big cities or, you know, vacation rental, like, you know, seaside, lakeside, whatever. Like urban, rural, yeah. Urban. Do you think, do you think, Third booking can be influenced by where you are. Oh, without a doubt, absolutely, yeah. Uh, you know, and a lot of that will will come down to what you're doing. Um, if that if that answers your question, I mean, I, where I'm I'm thinking, like in terms of an SEO standpoint, if you have got some really good quality content for your particular area, you know, if people are doing search queries for that particular area for a certain type of property, you know, and uh, and I thinking like keyword research, if they're using long tailed keywords like, you know, pet friendly, um, you know, villa in Tuscany or something like this, you know, you can get ahead of the crowd by doing something, or I know Tuscany is a very big region, but um, so, something like that, long tailed keyword searches that if you, if you know what your potential clients are looking for uh, within a given area, yeah, I think that's, uh, it's absolutely, does that kind of answer your question? Is that what you're? No, it's, it's more about, you know, is about performance. You know, do you think direct booking is more for urban or vacation rental? Is you know, I know that it's possible to positioning. You know, uh, with keywords, as you said, you know, a holiday home in 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 the, city, in the center of Rome or a villas in the Tuscany hillside. Yeah. But the thing is, do you think in terms of results for so return on investment? Um, it's possible to have more results in, in the urban areas or vacation rental. I, I think it's it's easier in a rural area. Easier. Uh, yeah, okay. I think it's more, I I think it's probably more important to do the work in a, in an urban area because of the level of dilution of listings. Okay. Nice. Um, in in urban areas has made life so much more so much harder for property managers. You know, whereas. Like 10 years ago, I've seen as I've worked with people and I've done it myself, you see the levels of increase of, uh, of rental listings in, in even small towns, let alone cities. It's phenomenal, you know, and uh, yeah, that's helped a lot of people out financially, uh, but it makes our life so much more difficult. So to stand out, I, I, think, I think everyone, to answer your question, everybody should be looking at a direct booking strategy, but I do think it's a lot harder for those who are, for example, living in a big city. Oh, um, yeah, there's, there's no we have people. We have question coming in, so mm. prepare yourself. Yeah, my, my last one. So we can say that you know unicity and scarcity are two things that can improve direct booking strategy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So you know, for for instance, you know, unicity. If you have a castle, it's quite probable that you you don't even need an OTA to promote yourself. Yeah, 
Uh, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Look, <laughs> I, I get all of my bookings through, uh, my, all of my bookings are direct throughout the year. They have been for about two years because I knew I needed to practice what I preach prior to, you know, going ahead with these bookings, uh, with, with these events. Uh, so I know there are, there, there are lots and lots of ways to, you know, to get ahead of the crowd and even like simple collaboration with local restaurants or local, you know, bars or whatever, that can go a long way to bring in bookings, you know, referrals from, from people uh, is, is so easy um, and, and can bring in several, several new bookings a year. Okay, so let's move to, you know, questions we got from, from our followers. Great, so great. Martina is asking, I have a luxury tour operator and direct booking seems to be quite difficult as we customize all services. What do you suggest? Can you, sorry, a luxury market? Um, luxury tour operator and direct bookings seems to be quite difficult to get. Look, the, it, it, depending on where you're at in your in your strategy uh, and in your you know how you're trying to get direct bookings, if you're at the very start, look, without a doubt, it's going to be really really difficult to get. You know, there there are there's a certain we'll, we'll definitely do a checklist actually, John Paul, of things that I think from start to finish people should be looking at, um, and we'll we'll put it on here. Um, so yeah, I'm not going to lie, it's it is difficult. But once I think you know or are aware of all of the things that you can possibly do, you can't do them all. You absolutely, there's, there's no company in the world who does them all, you know, apart from something like that, the behemoths. Uh, but doing the simple things, for example, um, with all of your previous guests, you know, what are you doing with that data? That, this is a really easy way to get people to book direct with you because they're repeat guests. You know, are you, are you showing them love when they when they get to your apartment to your properties, um, you know, do they know your brand? Will they remember you afterwards? Are you offering discounts to stay again? You know, these are things that you've got total control of. This is forgetting about SEO. This is forgetting about anything that is you know a lot harder to do. These are things that you, very easy, actionable things that you can do with your guests. You know, keep in contact with them with via your email marketing, um, just to yeah, as I say, just. Uh, just just show them some love, you know, and say you're thinking about them, you remember them, uh, you know, and I'm not saying email them every week, but every month or two, you know, just to say, you know, we're still here. This is our brand. Don't forget us when you next come into town. Here's your 10% off. We'd love to see you, that kind of thing. That, that, these are really simple, actionable ways um, to, to kind of start off on that, uh, on, on your strategy. Um, but yeah, there's, there's, there's so many ways, Martina. So uh, I, you know, let's, Let's chat, and I'll happily give give your uh, people here a checklist of things to consider. Wow. But it's not easy. It's not easy. I'm afraid there's no there's no uh, other way, way no. to, to get around it. And, and I, I want to add. I think it's what it's why a lot of people decided to go directly, move all their their bookings to OTA because yeah. it's cheaper. No, it's not cheaper. Is I think as the nearly the same price. But it's way easier. You just you need to put your products there, and OTAs will do the rest. I think all... actually, just just in again in response to that, the luxury market. I think um, if you have got luxury properties and you're providing that experience that is you know top notch, there should really be no reason why people wouldn't consider coming back to you again if you've provided that service that is you yeah. know highly professional, and uh, has given them the the, the experience that they wanted and dreamed of for their for their holiday um, that that should that is actually probably easier to get a repeat booking in that respect depending on your, actually, your location. I, I'm, curious, I, I, I'm, I'm curious to see which channels are you using so if you're a luxury to operate or maybe you're not using booking.com or Airbnb you're using different I, I mean yeah. probably well, I, I, yeah but you know depending on on the on the products you have your I would use instead, you know, luxury tour operators. Like, you know, there are a lot of, of tour operators in, in, in South Asia or in Dubai or something like this, that they are super interested. And I was in touch with some of them that they're interested in, in, in buying products in, 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 in Italy, for instance. So this is an, mm -hmm. some ideas, eh? 
So and I think as well with the with the luxury market as well, um, vis the visual aspect can come into it a lot more so because people want to see that they are getting that you know that that level of of experience that they you know that they expect and will will pay for a lot too. So. Um, I think, you know, uh, Instagram, Pinterest, they are places to, to really consider getting your, your, uh, your images on to, uh, and of course, using a, a you know, a professional pro um, photographer as well to make sure you, people can see what they're going to get uh, prior to, and to remind them of, of what they've had. Okay. And the question from Coilin, uh, we, they are based in Puglia and they oh, my, are- My brother-in-law is from Puglia. Okay. Bari, Bari, I think it's in Puglia. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. 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 And they are selling the rentals on from this area. So of, no, let let me read it directly the message because yeah, sure. I'm interpreting. <laughs> so we are based in Puglia and sell our rentals from this area. So I believe this is important also that we are on the ground and local to all guests. Do you agree? Sorry, I missed it. So uh, they are based in Puglia. Yep. Uh, and sell our products from this area. So I believe this it, it is important also that we are on the ground and local to all guests. Do you agree? Be, um, yeah, well, I'm in terms of, is that, is, that, is the question in your mind just being uh, whether they're available to for their guests to meet? Mm, so I believe it's important also that we are on the ground and local. Okay, yeah, yeah. So. Yeah, um, in terms of not being remote, being there. Um, yeah, yeah, exactly. Guests, I, I yeah, it's so really it's super important. Yeah, it's really important. And in this day and age, a lot of uh, of companies go down the uh, you know the the automated lock locking systems. You know where people can just got a code and they and they go in. Um, now I see that being probably more important for like corporate uh, accommodation. Uh, business travel than than in the kind of vacation rentals industry, um, because for me I get so and the companies I work with they get so many re uh, repeat clients coming off the back of the meet and greet that they've had and they say oh it's so nice to actually meet someone and uh, you know you've got the you've got the potential then to say to them uh, look here's here's our details please contact us at any point if you have any problems you know. Do, Making a, a less anonymous experience, uh, giving them a card potentially too at that point to say, you know, if you wanted a discount, please come back next time. But just to an answer any questions that they have, you know, it just makes your business look a lot more real. Um, and yeah, if that's either as part of a meet and greet or in an office locally, but I'm, yeah, I'm all in favor of being on the ground and local uh, and uh, being open, uh, literally open for, for business. Uh, yeah, I, I do agree. Um, if as long as it doesn't set you back too much, because I know, you know, in this day and age, it, it can be very expensive just to hire an office or even to send people to do meet and greets. Um, it can mount up, yeah. but I'm, I'm a big fan. So we have another question from Swadeshi Club. Uh, they are working in, for a hotel chain and they're asking what they can do to improve the... the um, how, how can I translate it? It's like they have the their booking department to incentivate the guests to the, to book direct. What they can do to in to incentivize. Yeah. Well, I think I've possibly touched on a few little things like there, like discounts can go a long way. You know, people know that they've uh, that they're going to get some kind of. Uh, instant gratification for for booking the next time round. Um, <coughs> I mean, in terms of incentives, that's probably the the easiest thing that you can offer and uh, and easily actionable. Um, um, you and you can obviously ap apply kind of time frames on that as well. Just to if you book before such and such a, a time. Um, one thing that actually that I'm suggesting for companies to consider at the moment is uh, like Groupon style vouchers, um, whereby um, your past guests can potentially buy vouchers, you know, of, of say for 100 euro worth 200 euro or worth 150 euro, something like that, that they can redeem in the future, uh, which could be a really good way to get some cash flow going at the moment. Um, but yeah, vouchers like that can work really well too. Uh, 
they're probably the two easiest things. I mean, you can incentivize reviews as well, but I'm, uh, you've got to be careful about doing that. Um, so yeah. one thing is really important to consider here is that you know if you are in a location where you know is very unique, like for instance, what I'm always saying, if your target of customers are you know foreigners coming visit, to visit, for instance, Rome. It's very hard to, you know, retain them because they are coming to Rome once in once in, in their life. Mm -hmm. But if you are working with, you know, very local people or, lo or people that you, they are very seasonal. So, for instance, if you have a vacation rental near, near the beach, is quite probable you are going to receive the same the same guests, maybe not the same period, but the, the, the year after, if they find themselves very good at your place, they come the the, the, the year after. So yeah, yeah. here is really important to consider if they, your guests are going to return. Yeah, yeah. And do they hear from you as well? It's important to keep in contact with them, you know, and I'd say at least every few months, just a yeah, little exactly. email, newsletter, just to say, you know, what's going on in the area? What events have we got coming in next year, et cetera? You're doing your apartments, if you're publishing them or they are, you're adding services or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What I would say, actually, uh, in terms of incentives as well, I think there are, I mean, there's a lot of freebies you can offer people as well, too, um, to stay with you. Starting uh, from discounts, you know. Uh, yeah, I'm, you I'm the, real... you direct, you, you have a better price. Yeah, exactly. And make that really obvious on your website as well. You know, what, what is the incentive to book direct? Uh, I recently booked a hotel. Actually, it was when I was coming to see you, John Paolo, last uh, couple of weeks ago, but it obviously didn't happen. But... Um, I booked, there was a cheaper price on booking.com, uh, but the price uh, actually was roughly the same, but the price at the hotel included breakfast. Tick, done. You know, because it was so easy for them, just, you know, for a few euro for breakfast. Uh, I would have booked them anyway. nearly, nearly free for them. Yeah, yeah. Or, you know, early check-in, late check-out, um, oh, mid-stay clean, welcome hamper. There's so many kind of little free things like that that you can offer. Yeah. Uh, for people to just make it obvious that they're going to get this uh, in order to book. Um, but free, I'm a big fan of freebies. Yeah. And I think with this, we, we, we replied to the, the, the next, next question was exactly about this, what they can, what people can offer to incentivate uh, direct bookings on the website offering just, you know, uh, flexible cancellation policies, flexible better policy. condition, yeah. or, you know, unique, Maybe Mark Simpson, once we met in Barcelona, he was saying like, you know, the, the, the checking point, it's a, the checking time is only at, you know, on, on booking.com is at 4 p.m. Yeah, in your yeah. website is 12 a.m. That's for me, yeah, early check-in. Yeah. yeah, but so, yeah, the, so. the most important one, best price guaranteed. Uh, yeah, you know, so don't let yourself be on the That's the minimum, level. yeah. But, you know, some perks that, that, you know, people can enjoy, really enjoy, say, if you book direct on our website, you have free parking or free, mm -hmm. free bottle of wine, free whatever. Yeah. Something that to you costs nothing, but yeah. is a is as a, a high value for the guest. You know, yeah, all of these things they can just they can cost up to say five euro maximum. You yeah, know, yeah. and to get to get that booking direct is uh, yeah, it's a no-brainer. No, yeah, yeah, but is you know you are starting, you know, and this is something that you can elaborate more. Uh, with a, a real uh, guest experience, uh, you know, strategy that you can, you know, build your, of, uh, build something that is really unique to somehow retain your customer then and use it as like a, you know, dire, a, a dire booking strategy for the future. It's, it's, yeah. I think that these are two things that are really combined and, you know, guest experience and direct booking are something that goes re really together. So yeah. if you have a good, if you offer, a, deliver a very good uh, guest experience, then it transmits, you know, the, 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 the guests say, hey, if I'm going to, to stay there in the future, I'm going to book directly from you. Yeah, make that guest experience so, so perfect that there's no reason for them to look elsewhere, you know, that they want to come back to you. And ju but just be sure to remind them that you exist, you know, when they're looking to book, you know, we, we all know there are certain times of year that people do book, especially holidays away, you know, December, January. Just make sure that they're aware that you're that you're still there. You're open for business, you, uh, you know, and you love them and uh, you, you want to you'd love to have them back. OK, nice. I think the last question, because uh, then 
we we have to close because the, I, I need some, five minutes away. I need I, I need sure. to have a coffee because <laughs> <laughs> I really I really need it. So last question from from Milano or Motel. Uh, what kind of love should we show to our clients right now, this period? I mean, yeah. the situation is very particular right now, so probably clients are not interested in discounts now. What do you suggest? How can I still keep in touch with my clients? Yeah. Um, I, well, first of all, to make sure you do keep in touch with them is really important. Um, don't just go quiet for the next few months. Um, I am suggesting with my clients just to send out occasional newsletters over the next couple of months um, just to say you know we, we are still here but be totally transparent you know just to say look this this is a, a really difficult time for us all and uh, you know you can you know quite openly say to them you know but we we are still here we're struggling but we are still here we would love to see you again and um, you know you you can personalize emails as well obviously whereby if you know through your guest data that, you know, a family has stayed with you or, you know, if it's a couple or something like that, that you should be looking at personalizing these, the, your email marketing campaigns anyway. But just, uh, yeah, just to say that, you know, we're, we are still open for business. We, we will be here and, you know, whenever you need to come back, uh, you know, please do consider, consider us for, for your stay. Um, transparency for me at this given time is, is possibly the most important thing because everyone knows we're struggling. You know, all of, all of the cancellations and rebookings that I've made over the last, and my clients have made, the guests have generally been really understanding, you know, and those who have canceled for a full refund have been like, we know you're struggling, we're really sorry, but, you know, we can't come back in another time or whatever. And that's, that's fair enough. But uh, I think everyone is understanding. And I think, you know, especially if someone has booked with you in the past, they, if you lean on them for that kind of emotional uh, support and uh, they, you know, that, that can be an extra level of your, your direct booking strategy over the next, the next two or three months or however long this may go on. Um, it's going to be tough for us all. Really good point of view. Um, I think, I mean, I, I really love the direct, the direct book, the book direct movement and I think we can, you know, have all the the the, the 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 afternoon talking about you know strategies and things like this, but yeah, unfortunately need... we don't have time enough to do that. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. Look, I'm very happy to do this again. There's so many things, uh, you know, that we can look at. Uh, but yeah. you know, Paolo is going to be working with with me on this uh, on this show in September. We're going to have some so many amazing speakers talking about all. Yeah, that. and actually, guys, I'm trying to bring Damien to Milan. Oh, Hopefully in, in in next year in February to the the, the OSB to be show not show let's call it event we are going to have next year because this year I have to say we are not having a real in person live event because due to the situation we we think that is not responsible to have a a, a real in person event so uh, hopefully uh, Damien is going to be with us next year in Milan. Love so I, I hope to have you as an uh, I get, as a guest in one in other webinars talking about direct bookings and you know talking about strategies to yeah. to sell more direct. Um, I yeah. hope people can review the website we 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 shared the the, the, the link to the, the 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 show that is bookdirectshow dot no. Direct that shows. Sorry, I'm really like that. <laughs> and, and and we hope you can share the, the this this the list of things that people need to consider to yeah. to, to improve the, the direct booking strategy. So the and you know, Claudia, uh, uh, Claudia, that's my brother-in-law, Gianpaolo. We can uh, possibly uh, we can possibly you know do a couple of webinars during the show because it's all going to be online. Hopefully, we said that. Um, to work for the Italian market, specifically for the Italian market, you know. Yeah, but of course, cultural. you know, well, having the, you know, we, the thing is, we need to consider the specific needs for the for this market. Maybe in these circumstances, that reboot wasn't designed for talking about uh, only about direct booking. I think we can dedicate even an entire day talking about direct booking with you know even Italian uh, Italian guests i mean we have a lot of people talking about their booking these days in italy so 
you know, having a lot of in interviews or people talking about uh, their book, and even in, Ita in Italian, is would be a really good thing. So uh, we are going to do something together in the future for sure. Right, right. Um, say that, Damien, it's been a pleasure for, to have with us to have you with us this afternoon. I hope absolutely. you can share the, uh, the, the, this document in in the following days. Yes, to, to our followers. And see you soon. I, I mean, we, we're going to see each other maybe next week. So <laughs> it's not a problem. But um, I hope to have you back into in, into us to be very soon. So Great. See, see you soon. Lovely. Okay. Ciao. Bye. See you. See you all soon. Bye.